What's up everybody, I'm Liam Clisham and today we're gonna take a look at using vertex maps inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift to animate textures and do some really complex look dev. Uh, if you wanna follow along, it turned out really well last time to give you guys some files. So below there should be a link to Gumroad and you can download the files and follow along. And if you find that it's too complicated, you'll just see everything in there on how to set up a pose morph tag and use a morph deformer and things like that. So before we get into it, let's go ahead and preview what we're gonna be doing this week. Inside Cinema 4D, we've got a pretty basic scene setup. You'll see I've got three different materials. Uh, this is the material I used for the intro video that you saw. And this is just the plastic that we've got right here, just to keep it simple. And then some copper gold looking teeth uh, material right there. And so main skull and then lower teeth, upper teeth right here. We're mostly gonna be focusing on this right here. So uh, just a brief overview of what a vertex map is um, and if you know what a vertex map is you can skip ahead about a minute but a vertex map essentially lets you paint on your selection so if you've ever done a point selection or a polygon selection those can get pretty jagged and uh, wonky looking while painting lets you keep it nice and smooth and you can blend between things and it lets you get some really nice effects so to get that you can go to character paint tool and I'm gonna set mine to add. It's usually set to that. Um, so make sure you've got add on. And as soon as we click, you'll see the skull turns red and everywhere we paint starts to turn yellow. And the best way to show you what's happening is to put it on a displacer. So what I'm gonna do is to throw a displacer in here. And under Cinema 4D tags, I'm gonna put a restriction tag and that restriction tag is gonna say only use the vertex map. And if you can do if you do a point selection tag, or sorry, if you do a point selection, or if you do a polygon selection, um, you can put that in here too. It's really telling Cinema uh, and whatever displacement or whatever thing you put the restriction tag on to only look at those selections. So the displacer, if we throw some noise in here, is only going to put noise and displace the areas that we've selected. And to really show you, I'll crank this up a good bit and just select this again, you can see that's what we're getting. And let me go ahead and double tap on this and I can show you smoothing it out. So I'll smooth it out and you can see it starts to get nice and pretty. If I hit play, I've got a subdivision tag on here with this redshift tag. So it's getting nice and smoothed out. Smooth it out again. Make sure I'm on the right tag, there we go. So really cool stuff that you can do. Um, a lot a lot more control than doing polygon and point selection and ed edge selections and things like that. So how does this affect materials? Well, something that Octane users have been asking for for a long time is using vertex maps to either control how their materials look, but you can also animate with them and do some cool stuff with pose morphs. So let's clear this out. And what a pose morph tag does is, say you're working with character animation and you wanna have your character go from a smile to a, a sad pose. You can control that really easily with a pose morph tag and you can use it for lots of other things too. Um, but as a general overview, you can just think about it like that. You're posing from one big smile to the next pose, which is a big sad face. We're gonna do similar things using the vertex map. So first we wanna select everything. So I'm gonna select this skull, go into polygon mode and hit V. We'll get this cool little sub menu and go to select set vertex weight, and we want it to start at zero. Go ahead and hit okay, and we'll get our vertex map there. The next thing we're gonna do is bring in a pose morph tag. I like to search for it just by hitting shift C and do pose, and you get our pose morph tag right there. 
and you'll see everything that you can use it for for position, scale, rotation, points, UV, other parameters, everything. We want maps. As soon as I hit maps, we're going to get this menu, and our base pose is going to be this here. And it knows to use this automatically. And the next pose we're working on is pose.0, which because of computers, it's actually our first pose, but computers start at zero. So um, don't get confused by that. That is actually your next pose, pose number one. And we're going to go in and select our vertex map again. Come over here, hit W again, select. Up, oh, make sure I'm actually selected on the polygons. Select, select vertex weight, go to 100. And you'll see it's all yellow now. We want the whole head. And if we come back in here to our pose morph tag, I'm going to lock that, select the vertex weight, and now I'm going to show you what it's doing. So if I slide between 0 and 100 in strength, it's actually morphing between the two. That's why we get this kind of gradation effect. Go ahead and pause the render view because it's not actually rendering anything. It's staying the same. So we can do some cool stuff with this. A nice gradation effect between, say, plastic and aluminum or whatever we want to do. But it'd be better if we can do it with some fall off or some noise or uh, just a little bit more control. So under our display or our deformers, we have a morph deformer. We're going to throw that on our main skull and make sure we unlock this so we can see our properties. And you'll see it already has our pose morph. I'm going to lock it again and do exactly what we just did just to show you what's happening. So it's the exact same thing except it's pulling the data from the pose morph and we get this cool fall off tag or tab. And I'm going to go into linear. And just like using any other deformer with fall off, we can start doing some really cool stuff. So I'm going to hit E, bring that up. And you know what? I think we need to set this to animate. So let me go ahead and unlock this, get our vertex property, our pose morph property back, set it to animate. Go back to this, make sure. Yep, there we go. Um, it was still in edit mode, make sure it is an animate, so now we can actually animate things. So now we get this cool fall off control. And so that lets us have um, some more complex animations between materials or between the restriction tag that we were using before. Um, if you want to do a deformer, then you can kind of pose morph between the two like this. So if you want to have a clean look and then have those displacements show up, um, this is one way that you can do it. And it's, say if you have the bubbles over here first and then as it fades in, it moves over here. And that way you don't have a bunch of vertex maps that you're trying to switch between. And it's just nice and easy like this. And so we can do the same thing with our material. So right now it's just this nice white plastic. And we're going to click on this and go into our shader graph. And don't be confused by this here yet. I'm going to talk about these in a second. So here's our white plastic. We're going to leave that as our base. And what we're going to do is start using this blender material. And I'm going to disconnect these. They're just here to make it so I don't have to search for everything. And what a blender material is going to do is let you blend between two different materials. So I've got this white plastic. But I've also got this iron. So I've got a hotkey to set it to the output. If I hit play on here, you'll see it's now iron. And it's got some scratches in there too. I've got a little normal map going. And you can watch some of the earlier uh, material tutorials that we've done. Um, and I go over how to do all this too. But if you haven't seen any of those, just a quick overview. So a blender is going to let you blend between this and this. We want our base color to be this white. So I'm going to set that to there. Go ahead and hotkey this into the output. You'll see that updates. And we'll go ahead and plug our iron in here. And if we take a look at our material blender, it's set to white. And so that means go ahead and use all of layer one. But if we go back down towards gray or even black, we start to shift back to our plastic. So now that you know how that works, we can do that with this vertex attribute. And the way you get that is just search for vertex, bring it in here. There's your node. 
and you can pipe in whatever vertex map you want into here. Now when this comes in, it's usually got a default color of pink or sometimes it's other colors. Make sure you just set it to white, that way you're working with linear black and white values. And we'll pipe this into our blender, blend color right there. And you'll see it's gonna update for a second. All right, let's change our view so we can see what's happening. I'm gonna refresh our scene really quickly, make sure everything's going nice and smooth. All right, so we've got plastic. So what happens if we move this? I'm gonna fade this through, and if we take a look as it loads, you'll see we're now using the vertex map to switch between the two. So in the front, where this is all yellow, we get our, or our iron coming in with these scratches. As I rotate towards the back, you'll see it's still our white plastic in here. And just to show it a little better, why don't we do something like hot pink kind of purple fuchsia. And from the side, you can see how it's really working. And you can use whatever kind of fall off you want in here. So if you do a noise, see we start getting this noisy pattern, set our clips low and high, get some little hard edges, change our seed around a bit. Um, maybe we can do like 200 by 200 by 200. And if we move this through, you'll see the noise moves through too. So then we get these cool patterns in here. You know, we can adjust our clips. So we get harder edges. If I move it this way, you can start doing some really cool stuff. So this is exactly what I did with the video at the beginning, except the material's a lot more advanced. So I'll go ahead and put this on here. Let it update. And so what I've got going on is this base kind of painted plastic right here, then this aluminum that I've got uh, just some scratches and a bump map and a normal map and then uh, even displacement in here that I'm driving with some noise and the vertex map right in here. And so if I move around, you'll see we get new displacement in different areas and then we keep it nice and clean and plastic and other ones. And in the video, I had it set to a sphere that I just scaled up. So right there, we've got nothing, and then I'll scale it up. And you'll see over here where the sphere is, it's a little bit hotter. Which I think I just killed the fall off. Let me bring that back. There we go. undo for a second there we go not sure what key I hit to kill it do a quick refresh all right so over here nice and hot so we get over here it starts to fall off bring that in too kind of get like a two-faced look going So say you're working with subsurface scattering and you want to have a two-faced look, this is how you could achieve it really easily. And then we can go from one side to the other. And just like that, you are now working with animated vertex maps to do some really complex texturing or just cool animations. Just a, a few clicks and setting up your maps and you're ready to go and you can use it through different materials. Just make sure you're using the same map and you can keep switching them out and do look dev really quick. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think it's pretty awesome how you can get really complex looks and animate materials with Redshift using a vertex map. If you have any questions, we live stream every Thursday for Redshift Live. Uh, you can catch us live here on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook, and even on Periscope. So come check us out. It's usually 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. 
and you can follow along and I'm going to cover this and whatever question you guys have and we just have a lot of fun. Um, so definitely look for that on Twitter. We announce it every week and you can get a link directly in your inbox or through a tweet. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.